Hello, and welcome to my next executive series video. Our topic is identification. Aaron Snyder here from Quality Systems Explained, where we make quality systems simple for you. If you're new to my channel, please hit the subscribe button. If this is the first executive series video that you've seen, please go back, check out the introduction. You can look in the video description below for links to any supporting information and an outline of the material that we will cover today. In each executive series video, we have a standard agenda that consists of four items. You can see those in the progress bar below. Please stick around to the end to make sure that you get those three bonus questions. Our requirement, identification, comes directly from 820.60 and ISO 1345 section 7.5.8. Identification in five words. Identify product, prevent mix-ups. We have to have a procedure that defines how we identify our product. Product must be identified throughout the entire manufacturing process. From incoming to manufacturing to storage, handling, distribution, installation, servicing, and even then returned product, it all has to be identified. It needs to have at least a product number and a lot number where applicable. We identify product at two levels. The first is the actual product identification, the product ID and the lot number. And the second is acceptance status. I will cover acceptance status in a separate video because that's part of 820.86 acceptance status. We identify product to prevent mix-ups because mix-ups cause recalls. So how do I know this is working? Well, first, all product at all stages is identified. Second, all materials are segregated both in use and storage. And then finally, we have line clearance procedures and line clearance processes to ensure that all material from the previous run is removed before we start the next manufacturing run. So how do I know this is not working? Well, first, you have product that's not identified. It's either sitting in a box and not identified, a tub, or it's by itself and it doesn't have identification on it. Second, we have non-conformances for mixed product where we have to sort and take corrective actions to actually address the mixed product. Then finally, our product identification, the labeling, it doesn't adhere to our product. It falls off and then the product itself is not identified. Now for those three bonus questions. The first, what type of physical means do we use to identify product? Second, what procedure defines the requirements for how we identify product? And then finally, do we do line clearance? If yes, what process governs the line clearance? Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, share, and comment. If you have any questions, please send me an email at qms.jedi at gmail.com. This is Aaron Snyder from Quality Systems Explained. Never stop learning.